The reason for this sale and why it's taking place right now is the fact that my landlord said it's over after 15, 20 years. Frankly, the word retirement terrifies me. I wouldn't know what to do with an idle mind. I love helping people. The gratification of placing a painting is much more pleasurable than making a little bit that all seems to drip away anyway. Before I became an art dealer, I was a teacher at the University of Delaware. I was pretty feverishly publishing small articles here and there. I thought I was poorly paid. I happened across a dealer in Holland. He wanted to open up a shop in New York, which is what I did. And that was 1982. It was called Hoogstater Nauman. And then I bought the business from him in 1985. I started out in Dutch art and then went to Flemish and got very much involved in Rembrandt and then expanded and I've enjoyed collecting and dealing in both Dutch and in Italian art. If I have a core as a collector, it's the interest in how a painting is made. So that's why this catalog has an entire section on paintings on glass, on slate, on marble, or a section on unfinished because that reveals how an artist is working. Those are the kind of paintings I always took home and tried not to sell. When I started collecting unfinished works, I had to know why it was unfinished. So that's why I bought the Drummond, for instance. The painting by James Drummond of Mary, Queen of Scots, brought to her execution, is a painting I bought sight unseen. And later I did find out that there is a finished version of the painting and this was abandoned for technical reasons, physical reasons of the way the panel reacted against the paint. I then expanded the idea of unfinished to include sketches. I, I fell in love with the Landseer that's in the sale because there are all these lines around it, these drawn lines and then painted lines. He even used it to work in other compositions. And I could imagine him saying, that's my sketch for it and this is my painting and this is how I draw. It's a beautiful thing to look at. There's such a human intrigue to the unfinished. It is, we put so much more aesthetic weight on an unfinished object than we do on a finished one. But you know what? They were all unfinished at one point. I had a rule when I bought 19th century paintings that they should relate to old masters. And of course, it's a lot of fun to get paintings that are in fantastic condition, which was criteria I've always had. For me, one of the most interesting is the Soroya. A detail of that painting is the screensaver on my cell phone. The part in the middle where there's the most luscious piece of paint you could ever imagine. The Soroya, the Mancini, those colors are so vibrant. For a person who works his entire life in old masters and then gets involved in the 19th century, that was the appeal, that was the revelation to me, to see thick paint in perfect condition. One of the most intriguing paintings in the entire sale is the Truti, because it's painted on glass. And that alone tells you it's quite different. You don't see that very much because glass is fragile, and it's very rare to have a full-scale painting on this size on glass from 18th century. It's an extraordinary accomplishment. I fell in love with the painting. Two of the most important paintings, actually, in the entire sale are the two by Bartholomew van der Helst representing a man and wife probably in front of their country house in Harlem. If you look at her hand, the ring on her finger, the fan, you see that Y. Van der Helst was revered more than Rembrandt as a portraitist starting in the 1650s. He's the ultimate realist. And it's kind of fun to see what you've accomplished all in one place. To define taste is what you don't buy. It's what you pass up on that tells you what kind of collector you are, I think. The best collector is a person who's a hands-on collector. As long as I'm around and there are auctions, I'm gonna to go to as many reviews and look at as many paintings as I can. I just can't get enough of it.